Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Just a reminder to please silence your cell phones if you haven't done so already. We appreciate that. The order for today's press conference will be Bill's owner, Terry Pagula. He will offer a brief comment for the introduction, and then we will hear from our new head coach. And we also will have a question and answer session, obviously, with our new head coach, as well as general manager, Doug Whaley. So as we typically do in, in these settings, if you have a question, please raise your hand. And uh, we have a couple of microphones out here in the crowd, so we will get to you. And then also, uh, we would ask that, uh, for Sean's sake, of course, that uh, you guys state your name and your affiliation so he can begin to uh, see names and faces and put everything together. Also, today begins a new chapter for our organization, and we are moving forward. So we will entertain questions pertinent to our new head coach and the search. Afterwards, uh, we're going to do our usual photo op. So give us a couple of minutes to remove the table and the podium, and we'll have a photo op up here afterwards. With that, I'd like to turn over the podium to Terry Pagula. Welcome. Thank you for coming out today as we announce the arrival of our new coach. As you know, I uh, had Doug Whaley conduct an extensive search for our next head coach, and um, so we arrive at today. Doug worked with Jim Manos in our uh, football department and went they both did a great job. We had we interviewed four <clears throat> four different candidates and discussed many other candidates. Our search focused on looking for a head coach who could concentrate on long-term planning and also on short-term decisive decision making that would help our players in winning more football games. He also had to be a man who managed, who could manage and enhance the cultural and the demeanor of our team on the field and act as the face of our organization. Sean, has been from day one in our search the leading candidate and uh, he's his strong passion for the game and he has been training for this ever since uh, being a young man in uh, Andy Reid's coaching staff with the Philadelphia Eagles he's been to two Super Bowls he's been part of two turnarounds and he has knowledge and vision of what it takes to win. I, I can't tell you how he went through his first interview and never missing a beat on any question we asked him or any situation we put him in. He is a smart, thorough, decisive, faith-based winner. So I introduce you to Sean McDermott. Good afternoon. So many people to thank when you get to a position like this. I want to start off with the good Lord above uh, and the blessings he's <clears throat> provided for me and, uh, and my family for the last 42 years. I wouldn't be here without my family who are here today and uh, my parents, who couldn't be here, <clears throat> as well as my brother and his family. I'd like to also thank the entire Panthers organization, the coaches, the many coaches I've worked with over the years, namely Ron Rivera, Carolina, and Andy Reid, 
at Kansas City. All the players I've had the honor to coach at times putting their bodies on the line and playing hurt and how much I appreciate that. Ownership, the entire Richardson family, led by Jerry Richardson at Carolina, as well as Jeffrey Lurie at the Philadelphia Eagles. President of the Carolina Panthers, Danny Morrison, and General Manager, Dave Gettleman. I'd also like to thank Terry and Kim Pagula for having the confidence in me to give me this opportunity, as well as the entire search firm and search committee of Doug Whaley and Jim Manos. And everyone in attendance today, we as a family look forward to this opportunity and making Buffalo our home. To the fans, we as a family look forward to being part of this great city and this passionate fan base. This is our type of town. We look forward to making Buffalo our home. The first people I want to address are the players, our players, some of, which are, uh, some of whom are here today. I'm proud to be one of you. It is an honor to coach you and I look forward to doing this together. I understand the expectations that come with the job of this magnitude, and I accept that challenge. I'm looking to build a culture of winning, and that starts inside these walls and extends to our community. It's an honor and a privilege to lead this football team and this organization. And as I've mentioned before, one we will look to do as a team. And with that, I'll take your questions. John Warrow's got the first question here. Hey, Sean. John, John Warrow with the Associated Press. Um, congratulations. Thank you. And, and welcome, I guess, well, to Buffalo. Um, <laughs> where others have failed, what gives you the confidence in knowing you're the one capable of bringing this franchise back to relevance? John, right? Yes. Is this on? Yes. John, you, you know, it's a great question. Look, I, like a lot of guys, I've, I've, I've trained myself to become a head coach really since I was born. I come from a football family. Uh, so conversations about sports and football and, and life were, were, were part of dinner conversations at the table ever, ever since I was young. Uh, getting into, into the NFL at an early age, around the, the greats of Andy Reid and, and the many head coaches that have come from Andy's tree, Ron Rivera being one of them. And then my diligent nature. Uh, I've, I've taken note upon note uh, and, and learned every step along the way. Uh, I've been a part of building a defense from the ground up, brick by brick, step by step. And, and I've been a I've, I've had help in that, in that process as well. Um, and so within that, I've gone to two Super Bowls. I know what that looks like, smells like, and tastes like. Um, and so, you know, I feel extremely confident uh, with my ability to lead this franchise moving forward. Sal, here in the front. Hi, Sean. Sal Capaccio, WGR Sports Radio 550 in Buffalo. Congratulations. Welcome to Buffalo. Thank you, Sal. The last few weeks, there's been a lot of people, national media, even local media, taking shots at the Bills organization and the perception of the organization. We know they interviewed you, but of course, you want to be here. You took this job. What made you want to take this job and your impression of Doug Whaley, Jim Monas, and the Pagulas and the Buffalo Bills organization? Yeah, you know, Sal, like, when I looked at this, at this job, I've done my research, um, and you'll get to know me soon enough here. I, I'm a pretty uh, meticulous and thorough guy. Um, in my opinion, this was the best job on the market. And some people uh, may not agree, but it's important how I feel. Um, and I say that it was the best job on the market for a couple of reasons, namely uh, the ownership and Terry and Kim. Uh, I've seen what great ownership 
looks like. And we have two great owners in Terry and Kim that are willing and committed to this football team and this organization, the city of Buffalo. And then secondly, when you, when you talk about a fan base, I've been up here and I've played here before and I've seen those fans, uh, capacity crowd hanging over that railing, screaming when, we're, when we were trying to do something on the other sideline. And, and that's what I want to be a part of. Um, that's what it's all about. And, uh, and, and I, I look forward to creating and recreating that again at our stadium. Um, those, that's what I focused on. Vic. Hey, Sean, Vic Carucci, Buffalo News. It would seem the quickest path for you to have success, just given your background and the circumstances here, would be making this defense vastly better in the shortest amount of time possible. How do you envision doing that, especially knowing that your system, your, your scheme, your background is vastly different than what this team has run, especially in the last two years? Well, when you look at it, Vic, you know, and what I've seen, there are players on this roster, and um, that's what I'm brought here to do. It's part of what I'm brought here to do is to evaluate the roster, but also put the players in position to be successful. And and uh, when I looked at this football team, and personnel was was part of the criteria in evaluating this football team. Uh, like I said, there's players on this roster, um, and I look forward to working with them. Okay, Sully. Yes, yeah, Sean, Jerry Sullivan from the Buffalo News. Rex Ryan uh, sat up there two years ago, and he made a lot of promises. He promised to, you know, have the number one defense and make the playoffs. Do you have any promises, or do you think it's important to keep expectations a little more modest this time? I'm not into making promises, um, and I think you'll find that out about me soon enough as well. I'm not. Uh, the promises I'll make are, are we're going to be competitive. Uh, we're going to compete every day, and and. and what I, what I intend to do is it starts, it starts today. It started yesterday when, when I accepted the job the day before. Um, we're going to compete on a daily basis. I'm going to build this culture along with the people in this, in this building uh, to develop a daily standard of winning uh, in the way we do things. You have to earn the right to win in this league, and I've learned that. And so uh, I just believe in the process, and we're, and we're going to win going through the process, uh, and when that time comes, we'll take the field, but we've got a lot of work to do between now and then. Adam in the back. Hey, Sean, uh, Adam Benini, WGRZ-TV, Buffalo, congratulations. Um, to what degree do you have control or influence on the 53-man roster? And Doug, I'd be interested in your response in any way, please. You know, Doug has control of the 53. Um, you know, we've talked in going through the process with the Pagolas, uh, I'm very comfortable with the situation, and um, I wouldn't take this job if I wasn't comfortable with the situation. And Terry and Kim uh, made sure of that, and so and I appreciate that. Uh, we've had extensive conversations um, throughout the interview process, and, uh, and 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 they've gone to great lengths to make sure that I'm comfortable with things. And Doug has as well, and so. Um, I wouldn't take this job if I wasn't comfortable. To add to that, Adam, this is a team effort. I mean, we're working together to get this franchise to where we know it should be. And it starts at the top. The Pagula's mantra is we're working together, we're not working for them. And that perpetuates through every level of this organization. Sal, down here. Hey, Sean, uh, Sal Mayorana from Rochester, congratulations. Uh, quarterback is a huge issue for this team. Uh, we don't know what Tyrod Taylor's status is, but if he is not back, you've got a second-year player who has never, well, he's played one quarter in the NFL. What were you looking for when you talked to Doug and Jim and the Pagulas in the quarterback situation? How do you plan to address a pretty big need for this team? So when you look at, obviously, the quarterback play in this league um, is critical. Um, I know, I just, actually I just met Tyrod 10 minutes ago before we came down here and had a nice conversation. So, you know, really at this point, whether it's Tyrod's situation or any other position, uh, let's, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves right now in terms of, in terms of those positions. I'm going to go through and evaluate every position group 
every player uh, the same way I do everything else in a methodic nature. Um, so, you know, with respect to specific players, uh, Tyrod in this in this case, um, you know, there'll be a time for that. Right now, it's about this organization and we, and getting this thing looking the way it needs to look. Joe here in the front. Hey, Sean. Uh, Joe Biscaglia, 7 ABC. Uh, in terms of the defense, Rex ran primarily a 3-4 based front. What are your plans with it? I know in the past you have done more of a four-man front. What do you plan to do with this defense? Yeah, you know, whether we'll be a 4-3 or a 3-4, you know, I come from a 4-3 background. I, I have worked with a 3-4 as well. Um, you know, again, strategically right now, I'm not going to say what we're going to be. You know, I just don't I just don't want to get into that right now. Um, I'm going to put the players in position to be successful. That's what a coach does. A coach adjusts to, to what he has, and, um, and I just believe in that. Mike? Uh, Coach Mike Catalana, 13 Wham TV in Rochester. Uh, what is your plan? You've been a coordinator. You've been calling defensive plays. Now moving up to this level as head coach, what is your plan going forward in terms of calling defenses and still taking all the responsibilities of a head coach? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I'm going to be involved in all three phases of this football team, offense, defense, and special teams. When you're a defensive coordinator, you spend a – heck of a lot of time looking at the offensive side of the ball. And so uh, I feel comfortable with that, with my background, the offensive side of the ball, and then my special team's background with uh, being around John Harbaugh uh, for years in Philadelphia, Dave Tobe, some of the great special teams coaches over the years, Bruce DeHaven. Um, and, uh, and so I'm going to be involved aggressively in all three phases. Uh, defensively, uh, whether or not I'll call the plays, you know, we haven't, I haven't decided on that, on that yet just from a management standpoint. Um, so uh, that'll come at, at the right time. Matt. Hey, Sean, Matt Fairburn, Syracuse.com. Um, in terms of your offensive coordinator, where are you at in that search? And um, can you shed some light on what you're looking for there and how much input that guy might have on Tyrod's future? The offensive coordinator position is is an extremely important one, and and um, and just like the rest of the staff, it's a it's an active situation right now. I've, as soon as they were I was offered the job, I, I went to work uh, on beginning to put this staff together. Um, I, I believe in quality staff and in hiring guys that are great teachers, great motivators, care tremendously about these players, uh, and again will put them in position to be successful. Um, and, and so I'm going to build it around that uh, with, with guys with great energy, uh, tremendous teachers. Um, so I've got a, there's a number of candidates out there we're talking to right now, I'm talking to, and, and, um, and I'm going to continue to talk to as soon as I'm done this press conference here. So um, I, what I can tell you is uh, it is official that we retain Danny Crossman as a special teams coach at this time. Mike. Sean, Mike Rodak from ESPN. Uh, Terry Pagula was on the radio earlier today, and he said that you asked about the organizational structure here, and he said that his answer was, quote, short and sweet. What was that answer? Well, you know, I re if it regard in regards to the reporting structure, I report directly to Terry and Kim, and, and as does Doug. John Warrow. Sean, John Warrow once again. Can you reflect back to... I spoke to Jimmy Laycock yesterday, and he talked about how emotional you grew when you were told about being um, getting your scholarship. Can you reflect back the 18 or so years and how far you've come? Whew. That's not what I that's not what I expected this this afternoon. Uh, uh, you know, listen, Coach Laycock is one of my greatest mentors uh, along my career. <clears throat> you can tell what I think about him just by my reaction here. Um, you know, I wouldn't be in this position without him. He, he, he runs a heck of a program at Wayne and Mary. <clears throat> and, and the way he runs his program, more than anything off the field, and developing young men, um, it, it, it's, it, gives, it has given myself, along with the other coaches, a great foundation from which to, from which to grow. Mike Tomlin and many, many coaches 
and personnel uh, executives that are in this league coming from that program speaks for itself. Heather in the back. Hey, Sean, Heather Prusak from WGRZ TV here in Buffalo. Going back to the quarterbacks, specifically with Tyrod Taylor, what do you know about him and how much have you actually been able to see what he can do? It was Heather, right? Yeah. Heather. Yeah. yeah, Heather, you know, again, just visited with Tyrod for five minutes upstairs. We did talk on the phone yesterday, and I appreciate uh, his willingness to reach out and fine young man. Uh, I remember going against Tyrod a little bit in the preseason. I've watched him in crossover tape, so I know, I know the skill set. I know what he brings to the table. Um, but again, at this time, it is, it is premature to, to expand any further than that. I'm going to go through and be diligent uh, with this evaluation of the roster, along with Doug, and doing this the right way. Leo, over here on the left. Hey, Sean, uh, Leo Roth with the Rochester DNC. Really, at this point, you don't have a feel that if Tyrod Taylor is a winning quarterback, if you could win with him. If, if after your eval, if you feel this is my guy, are you confident that you could uh, talk to your bosses, Doug and Terry, and say, this is my guy? And, Will they, would you have confidence that they'll say, okay, we're going to activate the remainder of his big contract? Um, there's lots of issues with him, but if you want him, will you get him? I'm not sure. Tell me what – I'm not sure what your question is. If Tyrod Taylor's – if you if – after your eval, if you decide that Tyrod's your guy, are you confident that Doug Whale will agree with you? you know, listen, I'm confident. I'm confident in Doug. I'm confident, like I mentioned before, and the Pagolas, uh, if I wasn't, I wouldn't be sitting here today in front of you. Um, you know, I, I know what I'm looking for. I know what a winner looks like. I know what it tastes like. And I've been around a winner. And that's what I plan on bringing here. John Scott. Hey, Sean. John Scott, Time Warner Cable News. How you doing? Good. Um, discipline and accountability, two things a lot of the players discussed at the end of the season that they felt needed to improve upon. What's your approach in holding players accountable and enacting discipline? You know, as I mentioned at my, at my opening uh, there, it's about a culture. And um, <clears throat> I think if you talk to the players that I've been around and the coaches I've been around, uh, I think they would tell you that that's not been a problem in my career. Um, I believe in doing things a certain way, and, uh, and it starts with myself. Uh, as a leader, if you don't hold yourself accountable, uh, then it all, it all breaks down from there. So um, I'm going to do things uh, that I believe in, in building that culture and doing things the right way. Uh, we'll have an identity uh, on the field in all three phases, and uh, it starts with doing things the right way, playing hard all the time, smart discipline and tough football something in a product these these fans uh, will be proud of on a weekly basis jim in the back here I'm hey sorry. sean josh reed cbs here in buffalo 17 is a number that you're going to hear a lot it's that's how long it's been since they made the playoffs is it is that the drought is that something that you'll embrace or is it something that you'll say that was the past, and that's not what we're about. Or is that something? Because it's something that's big with the fans around here. Yeah, listen, I, I know what the, the rich history of, of Bill's football is. I recognize that. Um, so when people look at the 17 years, um, I, I understand that. I get that. But I also draw on the tradition uh, and the many great players that have played here. And, and, I'm, and, and so that's, a, that's going to be a big part of us. And as we move forward, uh, I understand that 17 years. I understand, um, and working with Bruce DeHaven in Carolina, we shared a lot. He shared a lot about that. Um, like I told you before, in terms of the passionate fan base, I'm from the Northeast, so I get it. I, I understand it's part of the draw in coming here, uh, what a passionate fan base is all about. Um, I understand this type of city and town. That's how I grew up, and so um, that's how I wake up every morning, just like them. I'm hungry. I'm not going to steer away from or shy away from this challenge. Uh, we have to start inside, like I mentioned at the outset, and win inside the building, and it's got to extend to our community and doing things the right way. Jimmy, you got one? 
There you go. Jim Fink from Business First. Sean, Terry Pagulu disidentified you as the face of the organization. Besides all your on-field football responsibilities, are you going to feel any responsibility to help sell tickets or sponsorships or any of the cor on the corporate side? You know, when you look at my background, you see, was it Jim? Yes. Jim, when you look at my background, Jim, I think it's a little bit unique in, in terms of where I came from and, and the foundation I built, er, built early in my career um, in terms of the business side, some experience on the business side as well as the personnel side. Um, so I understand that, that those two sides have to work hand in hand. Um, the members of the organization that are here, and we, we, we talked this morning, uh, each and every one of the members of this organization are critical, critical to, to our success. Those two sides have to work hand in hand. And, and I understand that, and, and that'll be big for us. Nick. Hey, Sean. Nick Veronica from the Buffalo News. Uh, this question is for Doug, actually. Last time around, uh, Terry had said he wanted Rex because he thought the team was two plays away from 11-5, and five and they were on the cusp of breaking through, so he wanted a veteran coach. This time, it was uh, the interviews were exclusively coaches without head coaching experience before. What made that the right direction this time around? We looked at it uh, this way. To win in this business, it's about two things. It's about players and winning. And with Coach McDermott, we know we have a guy that will maximize player development as well as consistently give our ball club a chance to win. And that's what we were focused on. Sully? Yeah, this is also for Doug, it's Jerry Sullivan, and I, I hope this isn't redundant, but I want to be clear. I thought you suggested in your end of the season conference that you might, that more power over personnel might flow to the new coach than previous. Was that discussed at all? And has there been any change whatsoever in that power? We'll keep our discussions that we had in the interview process private. But uh, the thing I will stress to you, Jerry, this is a team game. And we approach that in management. It is a team approach. We are all in this with one goal. And that's to improve this franchise and consistently compete for championships. So with that being said, his input is valued and respected not only his but his whole coaching staff and, and you should know like i said before you know i'm i'm very comfortable with the situation we've talked about it i wouldn't be here if i wasn't comfortable um and, and i like i said i thank the pagulas uh in the in the process and the communication that involved ensued during that process was very extensive Good. sean can you share um what you learned I, I, I mean, highlights, if you will, of uh, the time you spent with the late, great Jim Johnson, defensive coordinator for Philadelphia. How much, also, how much of, the, of an influence has he been on your coaching, especially defense? How much do you still implement from what, at the time, was really viewed as kind of a lot of out-of-the-box thinking by him? You know, he's, you know Jim Johnson is, is one of the best defensive football coaches ever, ever to coach the game. Uh, at an early age, I was around, <clears throat> excuse me, Coach Johnson, and what I would consider the Harvard of football, uh, defensive football, in terms of how to affect a quarterback, how to shape a game plan. Uh, and when you look at that staff and the guys that have grown, gone and uh, on, on, gone on from that staff, uh, from and from Andy's staff and Ron Rivera, Leslie Frazier, Steve Spagnola, um, John Harbaugh, myself now. Uh, I don't think you'll find a staff uh, that came from really Andy and, and, and one defensive coordinator uh, like that around the league. Got time for a couple more guys. Thad. Coach uh, Thad Brown from WRC in Rochester. Um, you said Danny Crossman has been retained. There were reports about Leslie Frazier, Juan Castillo yesterday. Can you confirm any other hirings with assistant coaches? And then generally, what are you looking for when it comes to you know, building a staff and specifically with your coordinators? Yeah, you know, Danny has been retained at this time. The, the other uh, guys that we are actively pursuing and working on, those are, those are still out there. So nothing else has been finalized at this time that I could share with you. Um, but we are actively uh, working in that regard at this time. Um, in terms of what I'm looking for in coaches, you know, I talked about that earlier in terms of, number one, great people. Uh, you win with people. I mentioned that this morning as we talked with the staff. Uh, this is a people-driven business. X's and O's are important. You better have X's and O's. Uh, but I want guys that 
care about people, are going to care about these players, are going to go about it the right way. Um, as I've talked before, I was asked earlier about um, my background in accountability. That's huge for me. Sal, you got the last one. Thank you. Sal Capaccio again, Coach. Since you broke into the league, you were a very young man when you did. You're still pretty young, but 1999, when you were in your 20s, the game has changed a lot since then from practice rules, medical rules, uh, a lot of analytics now incorporated into the game and things like that. How have you personally had to change your coaching philosophy from then until now? And also, even going forward, like how much do you embrace some of the new wave thinking, the advanced stats, things like that, the, all the technology that's available to coaches? You know, I was fortunate enough, as you've already heard me say this afternoon, I was around some great coaches at an early age. So doing things the right way is what it really comes down to, uh, whether it's off the field or on the field. And it's my belief in order to win on the field, you've got to win off the field first. And, and uh, so from a changing um, techniques, as you talk about safety and things of that nature, I've always believed in safety first. I've always believed in doing things the right way. Um, if I was coaching my son and playing football, I'd coach him the same way, and safety first. And, and, and I think being a part of being a, a good football coach is mastering fundamentals and techniques. And those of you uh, that would ask my players and the coaches I've been with, uh, we, that's going to be stressed on a daily basis. I'm a big believer in fundamentals and techniques. I'm a big believer in, in character. and. Uh, and so as far as analytics, things of that nature, um, we're going to do everything possible to gain the competitive advantage um, within the boundaries of, of the core values of this organization and the rules. And so analytics is a part of that. Thank you, Sean and Doug. Guys, give us a few minutes here. We'll clear off the table, and then we'll do the photo op right here. Terry, Kim, you guys want to come up? You don't want the football? Terry, <laughs> you want a ball or you want to hold the football? You sure? Okay. Sure. There you go. Guys, we'll do it this way. Every, All four of you, look to your left. Okay. Now look to the center. Now look a little bit to your right. There you go. 